Northern Off-Road to get a new bumper made up for that thing. So the plan is to get a proper wraparound bumper that starts here, goes all the way around the body, hugging the body right up to the exhaust to protect the entire underside if I were to head into a ditch that was deeper than I thought it was or if rocks were to also be bigger than I thought they were. There you go. That's that. Now we can get to the exciting stuff. Check out these brackets. They are beefy. Super key. Just compare what you saw now to these. Those, those are like twice as thick as the brackets on these. So I'm, I'm confident that those will last. They've also got incorporated recovery points. So that's quite cool. Some fresh hardware, put that there. That's not too bad. They stick out a bit far, but those are recovery points. And in the end, judging from here, I'd say that's just the right amount. Okay, so I'm standing around a bit. Check out this Oaks 4x4. So this is Gavin's 1988, 1999, 1990 or 1991 Toyota Hilux. That's Gavin over there. How's it? Okay, you just corrected me, it's an 89 model, but this thing is super nice. I mean, just look at this interior. Nothing's missing, everything is there, nothing is cracked. Look, even the vinyl still looks damn near new. He's got a little refrigerator there. He told me these seats might be from a 2005 Toyota Corolla. And in the back, he's got another refrigerator. And here, normally sits a toolbox, it's got a little ARB air compressor there, cup holders, very important. And moving on to the exterior, he's got a proper ARB bull bar, some spotlights, some LED replacement headlights. I'm not a fan of those, but they do work very well apparently. He's got the original grill, and look in what good condition that is. He's got some really nice period correct wheels on here. And then to tie everything together, he's got some cattle rails that they actually built in-house, along with a rear bumper that they also built in-house. Also can't forget about the dual battery system. And then it's also sitting on full old man emu suspension. So this thing is capable. And I'm pretty sure that it rides a lot more comfortably than mine does. And then something really special. This also had the bro speed conversion done. Much like mine, but before it had the V8 put in it. This is probably one of the cleanest examples of one of these, especially the import model. This is probably one of the cleanest examples that I've ever encountered in the wild. This, damn this thing is beautiful. So slowly but surely everything is coming together. We've got the brackets there, we've got the hardware there, we've got the first bit of pipe here and I just selected the badge that's going onto my bumper. That looks pretty neat if you ask me. so good the test fit went well we know everything is working now we've got to put the corners on and make sure everything is sturdy then we'll have a bumper
so I had this hunch that this thing was in an accident somewhere in its past. And it seemed that that would most likely be the case. Because as you can see, this is blue. This is the same blue that's on the little VIN tag. So I know this is the color it was from factory. But the paint started chipping off on the bed because the guy that painted it didn't do a very good job. And where it chipped off, you can see it's revealing white paint. You can also see that this tailgate has been panel beaded and repaired before. But the reason I'm now so certain that this thing wasn't an accident because now that we've got these tabs on to mount the bumper, you can see this one is a little bit skewed. And that's not a problem with these guys' um, cutouts. The cutout is perfect, it's plumb. It's completely flush with my chassis rail, which means the chassis rail on that side is a bit crooked. Um, so yeah, that confirms that theory of mine. Not, not good news, but at least now I know for certain. We're actually cutting it quite close because we're planning on going wheeling right after we get that bumper in and we're running late. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the bumper in, finish the bumper, get that on and construction and as it should be, then just put it on the vehicle and then go wheeling. You can check the next video for that. But then we're going to take the bumper off and paint it at home just to save time because we, well, ran out of time. is that now like I said I'm gonna go home paint it at home because we are running an hour behind schedule to go wheeling so we are in a bit of a rush so yeah it's a bit crooked I think you can see it on camera as well we can attribute that to my crooked chassis and um, well it wasn't crooked when we tacked it up on the vehicle so when I paint it before I completely fasten up off fasten it before I put after I've painted it I'll just make sure that I adjust it a little bit because it does have some adjustability to it. So now I can say goodbye to this eyesore. So yeah, now we are on our way to Pisong Kloof 4x4. Um, so stay tuned for that video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And tell me what you would like to see more of. See you guys in the next video.